We've also in Florida not just given lip service, but we've put our money where our mouth is when it comes to promoting a culture of life. We signed the Heartbeat Protection Act in the state of Florida, the strongest protections for right to life in the modern history of the state of Florida. We've also stood up very strongly uh, for religious liberty in the state of Florida. And here's the thing, we'll see some of these cases like Coach Kennedy from Washington State, all he wanted to do was pray at, at midfield after a football game. Uh, and wasn't forcing anyone to do it. A lot of the players wanted to do it. He lost his job because of that. Uh, and so he goes all the way up to the Supreme Court and he wins 6-3. And people say it's a victory for religious liberty. And I'd say, yeah, in a narrow sense it is. But I say to you, the fact that that case is even being litigated shows we do not have religious liberty in this country. What the left wants is, they say you have the right to, you know, to go to your church for that one hour every Sunday and you can believe what you want to believe. But the minute you get outside that church, uh, they think you need to bow down and bend the knee to their agenda. That's not religious freedom. That is not what our founding fathers fought for and established. And this was something that was very important to them. George Washington, uh, soon after he became president, he got a letter from a, a rabbi at the Hebrew congregation in Newport who thanked him the fact that in America, you know, this Jewish congregation could practice their faith freely. And Washington wrote back and he said, you know, uh, it's great to be in a country where your right to practice is not simply tolerated uh, by elites who ultimately have control over the scope of your freedom, but is something that is yours as a matter of God-given right. And we need to get back to religious freedom being something as a matter of God-given right. Because you look at these, the victory with 303 Creative, the compelled speech, where they were forcing a Christian to, to, to say something that they didn't want to say, they won, six to three. Those three liberal justices would have forced them to bend the knee. And here's the problem with that. If it was a conservative a law forcing a liberal business owner to profess something they disagreed with, all three of those liberal justices would have voted the other way, and we know that. So what does that mean? It means the left views leftist ideology uh, as effectively the national religion. They will tolerate our faith as long as it doesn't impact their agenda. The minute there's a conflict, they expect believers to bend the knee. I can tell you in Florida that is not acceptable. When I become president in the United States, that is not going to become acceptable. We also understand that uh, what we've shown in Florida that you can do uh, with the economy, for example. And, you know, Penny mentioned with COVID, we were able to, to keep people in business, and we had a huge rush of people coming down, businesses thriving. We're the fastest growing state in the United States. Uh, we're leading the nation in net in migration every year since I've been governor. Uh, we've run big budget surpluses every year. Since I became governor in 2019, we've actually eliminated almost 25% of our state's total outstanding debt that it accumulated throughout the history of the state. Uh, we're ranked number one in education by US News and World Report. Our crime rate is at a 50-year low. And we have the fastest GDP growth amongst our large states. And so why are we able to do that? And yet New York and Illinois and California aren't able to do that because we are leading and we are doing policies that are supporting the freedom of the people that we represent. They are doing in the states what Biden's trying to do up here. Of course it's not gonna work. Uh, and so we show you can work, you can do the, have, have the strong economy. So we must reverse Bidenomics on day one. And I'm gonna take all those rules and regulations and throw them right in the trash can where they belong. I'm not going to let the Congress spend this country into oblivion any longer. And let's just be clear, we didn't get $32 trillion in debt just because of one party. It's been Republicans and Democrats in D.C. who have bankrupted this country. And we need a new sheriff in town, and we will do that. And we will also help to reduce inflation by expanding our domestic energy production. We will be energy dominant again in this country, and that will be good, not just for people's pocketbooks, not just for business, not just for jobs, it's gonna be good for our nation's national security. Biden has weakened us with his Green New Deal. We're taking that, and we're chucking that in the trash can on day one as well.
And finally, and I know there's a bunch of other stuff, but our time is limited. Uh, I'm somebody that hates uh, listening to the rhetoric when it's not followed by results. Uh, there are things that, you know, I could have promised as governor, I could be promising now on the campaign trail that I know aren't going to happen. Um, and so I don't do anything that I'm not going to follow through on. Uh, so if I tell you I'm going to do something, you can kind of write that down and you know when he gets in there, uh, he's going to do it. And I'm sick of being for years and years and years uh, having Republicans complain about our southern border. I'm going to be the president that finally ends the border problem in America. And you do that. You do that by declaring it a national emergency on day one. We're going to marshal all available resources, including our U.S. military, to be on the border, to stop the invasion coming in. Yes, we will build a, a border wall, because I think that that's something that's good and important, and it needs to be done. But even more important than that, uh, as commander in chief, I'm going to be willing to lean in against the Mexican drug cartels. They are killing tens of thousands of our citizens every year by bringing fentanyl into this country. I've met with now dozens of angel moms. These are mothers who have lost a child because of fentanyl overdose. And I can tell you, there's people that have problems with addiction, uh, and sometimes that spirals out of control and it's a tragic outcome. But what we're seeing with fentanyl is you're having young people who think they're taking like a Xanax to help them get through finals. It turns out it's laced with fentanyl. They take it and then they die. So just imagine as a parent, uh, if you have kids of that age out there, not, they, they can make one small mistake and that could be the end of it. And yet Joe Biden doesn't care about these people that are dying. He's not lifted a finger to hold the Mexican drug cartels accountable. Uh, they are invading our country and killing our people. I'm authorizing the use of deadly force against them. If they're breaking, if and when they try to break into our country, bringing fentanyl in, uh, these Mexican drug cartels, it's going to be the last thing they do because we're going to leave them stone cold dead. So I want to thank you all for all your hard work, your dedication to the cause and our country. This is our generation's time for choosing the way there was a time for choosing during Ronald Reagan's rise to the White House. We are in the midst of a national malaise. We have declining prospects for the future of our country. We cannot and we must not accept this decline as inevitable. We have to refuse to raise the white flag of surrender. We must reverse this nation's decline. We must deliver to our people a new birth of freedom. I'm somebody who believes in the American dream because I've exemplified it. I was, uh, my parents were working class. My grandfather lived and uh, worked in a steel mill in western Pennsylvania outside of Pittsburgh. Uh, and I always understood that in this country, if you work hard, uh, you can get ahead. I started working minimum wage jobs to be able to put myself through school, to be able to give myself an opportunity to succeed. That dream is slipping away for millions and millions of Americans, and we have to restore it. We have to choose freedom over Bidenomics. I'm also somebody that even as I worked hard to put myself into a position to succeed financially, uh, after September 11th, I felt the call to serve the country in uniform, so I volunteered uh, to serve, volunteered to serve in Iraq. I was attached to uh, a U.S. Navy SEAL team in places like Fallujah and Ramadi, which was uh, not exactly the Four Seasons at the time. So I understand the importance of putting service above self. Uh, as, as the executive... As the executive, you're called upon to be the leader, uh, but what you have to do is you have to channel the hopes, dreams, and aspirations uh, of the people that you're representing. Uh, it's not about me. Uh, it's not about my issues. It's not about litigating things from the past. It's about your future, and you've got to be willing to expend political capital to stand up for the people that you represent. You know, Penny mentioned the COVID stuff. I was taking positions, um, you know, at the time back in 2020, that was universally criticized by every health bureaucrat in America, 
everybody on the left, everybody on the media, and quite frankly, even many Republicans were doing it. And I had a lot of friends and supporters who sincerely wanted what's best for me, saying, man, you've got to do something different. You are getting filleted, you're getting hammered, I know you think you're right and all this stuff, but just start issuing some mandate, just do something to show and get them off your back. And you know, um, a leader's job is to care more about protecting the jobs of the people he represents than, than protecting his own political hide. So I was totally willing to let the chips fall where they may. I didn't know how it would work, but we knew that we had to do that. And so that's what you have to do as a leader. Doing what's right in this country, if we're standing for our beliefs and we're fighting for those, that is not going to be cost free. They're going to come after you. They're going to smear you. They're going to lie about you. Uh, they're going to do everything they can to stop you. Uh, but we always have to choose strength over surrender. Uh, and that's exactly what I will do. And then as a dad of three, uh, I'm very sensitive to what's going to happen to our next generation. Yes, I believe in the rights of parents deeply because I'm living it. And my wife and I understand how important it is. And we understand how important it is that we finally fix education in this country so that these schools are not indoctrinating, but they are actually teaching our kids how to learn. So the time for excuses for our country is over. We are not getting, we are not getting a mulligan on 2024. I do not want to repeat like we have in the last few elections where there's all these recriminations, all these excuses about why you didn't do or this do. I want to do like Florida, where we win the biggest landslide in the history of the state. That's what I want to do. So we have no choice but to get the job done. We've got to get the job done for our future, our kids, our grandkids. We also owe it to the people that have sacrificed in prior generations, people that have worn the uniform, risked their lives, and indeed given the last full measure of devotion. We don't do justice to their sacrifices if we allow this, uh, this uh, country to decline. It can be done. I showed in Florida it can be done. And the fact that we have stood up, gotten done what we said we were going to do, stood for the right principles, fought the left, beat the left, beat the media, beat the Democrats, shows that you can trust me to do the right thing in the future. If I tell you I'm going to do it, you know I'm going to do it. And I can promise you this, uh, it's not going to be an easy road to get our country out of the malaise that it is, uh, but it can be done. And as your president, I promise you this, I will not let you down. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Thank you very Ryan much. Santos. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you for making Florida the place where woke goes to die. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.